Hey guys, welcome to today's Vehicle Visionary. Today we're in a bit of a different position than normal. Normally I'm walking around the vehicle talking to you from outside, but today because it's so windy outside and I don't have a place to film indoors where there's not a lot of noise, I'm just going to sit inside of the 2021 Chevrolet Traverse 1LT all-wheel drive we're going to talk about in today's video. I borrowed this model from my friends at Red River Chevrolet. As always, I appreciate my friend Diane, the Corvette lady, for her help in that area. So let's talk a little bit about the history of the Traverse. You might not know, the Traverse originally debuted at the Chicago Auto Show way back in 2009. That's right, quite a few years ago was when this model made its original debut and it received a refresh in 2017 and then in 2019 it actually gained a spot kind of up the rung so to speak on the ladder of Chevrolet because it was slotted above the Blazer. There's some interesting information that you might want to know. Its competition includes the Dodge Durango, the Ford Explorer, and the Honda Pilot. Maybe we'll park some of those next to each other, the Traverse, and maybe some of those other models. Tell me if you'd like to see a comparison, because I can definitely make that happen if you are interested. And as we begin to talk about exterior features, I'm going to list a partial list of the safety features that you can expect to find with this 1LT trim level. And I'll also list all of the trim levels of the Traverse and their base prices so you know what those are. You can find that not only on the screen right now, but also down in the description of the video to make it real easy for you to, to know what you might want to spend, what the potentials might be in that respect. There is a link down in the description of the video to this very Traverse. As long as it's in inventory at Red River Chevrolet, you can click on that and see the entire list of the safety features. Like I say, gave you a partial list on the screen, so there's not too much to read there. I like the fact that you've got HID lighting all the way around, HID headlights, HID tail lights, and have turn signal indicators, of course, built into the side view mirrors. Those are power heated side view mirrors, by the way. And I realize the heated side view mirrors, well, that might mean a lot to you. It might not mean anything depending on where you live and really when you watch this video, I guess, in March of 2021, it's already starting to warm up into the 80s here in Northwest Louisiana. You don't really need those heated side view mirrors the way we did earlier in this year and late last year. And you'll find 18 inch wheels all the way around keyless entry. That's that button on the door handles as long as you have the remote on your person, you can walk up and touch that button. Now, if you, anyone has the question, I've had this asked before, what happens if you're sitting in traffic and somebody wanted to come and hijack your vehicle, carjack you, can they hit that button and unlock the doors when they're locked from the inside? The answer is no. If that person doesn't have the remote on themselves, they can't do that. So no worries there. That safety feature is already built in. No big deal. No problem whatsoever. And when you get to the rear cargo area, power rear door, that rear lift gate. And I like the fact that depending on your situation and or preferences, there are multiple ways to open that door, but there's also a way to adjust it on the driver's side door. You can adjust it to open all the way, or you can adjust it to open three fourths of the way, depending on maybe if you have any clearance issues or whatever your personal preference may be. I really like the fact that that option is there. So, as you can see, this model comes either as a seven or eight passenger model. This is the seven passenger that we're looking at today. So it is a three row SUV. And as you can see, you can lower the rear seats or the middle row seats and the rear seats to maximize your cargo space depending on your needs and or situation. Got a little more storage there underneath the floor. The spare tire is located underneath the vehicle, just in case you're wondering if that is there. And when it comes to the rear seat area, you're going to have some cup holders back there. Not as much leg room as you would have in the middle row. You can move the passenger side middle row seat forward to allow easy access to and from the rear seats. Two USB ports found there. We're also going to find two more USB ports 
for your middle row seats and actually two more here for the driver and passenger as well. A total of six USB ports throughout the Traverse. You're going to find tri-zone climate control. So the middle row area has the controls for the rear seat passengers as far as controlling the fan speed and the temperature. Then of course you'll have dual zone here in the front. And when it comes to keeping the interior good and clean, you've got all weather lining all throughout the flooring of the vehicle. You also have it for the rear cargo area. So you don't have to worry about having to deal with issues with the carpet that's underneath those floor liners getting dirty or stained or whatever the case may be. Front seat, middle row, rear seat and cargo definitely going to have its pluses depending on what you do with your all wheel drive traverse. And what I did notice here is that all four windows are one touch, but the only window that's one touch down and up is going to be the driver's side. So for the other three windows, it goes down one touch, but you're going to have to just hold the button or maybe whoever's sitting at those doors will hold the button to bring it back up. Just a point of interest that I thought I would share. And of course here on the steering wheel on the left hand side, you've got cruise control and you can use voice recognition, answer and hang up on phone calls, all that good stuff, depending on what you want to do. You can also go through a lot of different settings on the dashboard, get a lot of information, make some changes there depending on what you want to do. One of my absolute favorite features here, when you look under the infotainment screen, I just love how simple Chevrolet's infotainment system is to use Bluetooth, Wi-Fi hotspot, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, it's all there, teen driver mode, that's part of the safety features that I showed you on the screen earlier but I like the fact that underneath you've got some buttons for controlling the volume and surfing through the stations and even returning home on the infotainment screen. But on the far right hand side, you hold that button down, what's going to happen is that infotainment screen is going to raise up, very similar to what we saw with the C7 generation of the Chevrolet Corvette, something you don't get with the C8 by the way. That was a little disappointing to me personally, but you do have that floating screen, so there are some advantages to that. But with the Traverse, instead of that screen dropping down, it actually raises up. But you do have some storage space in there. It's a secret hidden compartment. And when the ignition is not on, nobody can gain access to that. In fact, if you're in valet mode, you're concerned about that. Well, it locks all of that. Valet cannot gain access to whatever you have in there. Now, on this particular trim level, I noticed there's not a USB port as we've seen in some of the Corvettes, but I believe that is available on some of the higher trim levels of the Traverse. And like I said, dual zone climate control here, a couple more USB ports, and there are a few 12 volt power outlets throughout the interior as well, if you wish to take advantage of those. Or you could always plug in the adapter to make that an additional USB port if the need so arises. And Storage right underneath that area, if this model had wireless charging, which is available, that's where it would be located. And of course, your shifter right here, and if you go all the way back to L, you can shift up or down with the button on the left-hand side of the, of the shifter. almost said steering wheel there, but the shifter. Don't want to get the correction Nazis of YouTube after me for saying something wrong. Yes, I said correction Nazis. Got the drink holders here as well power parking brake, and like I said earlier, you can actually turn your four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive traverse into two-wheel drive. That's what this dial is for right here. You can, of course, dial through. You can be in all-wheel drive, you can be in two-wheel drive, or you can be in off-road mode. And while this is not a super rugged model, it does have some light off-roading capabilities. And the multitasker up here in the front. I always like to talk about the multitaskers in these vehicles. Well, here it is right here with the center console. Got a nice large center console. That top doubles as an armrest. You can, there's that little tray in there. You could store quite a bit in there if you wanted to or just leave it out altogether. Enough space in there, I'd say, to put in maybe five or six Vehicle Visionary t-shirts. Just fold those just right. You could definitely stuff those down in there. You can also put quite a few into the glove box. If you want to see what the glove box looks like, well, there you go as far as space goes. Interior is ultimately very comfortable. Now, this is cloth interior. 
And of course, there are higher trim levels depending on what you so desire. Okay, as we hop out on the road for a test drive, did you think I forgot about the engine details? Well, honestly, I did, but we're gonna share that right now. Under the hood is the 3.6 liter V6, puts out 310 horsepower, 266 pound-feet of torque, it's made into a nine-speed automatic transmission. Of course, we talked about the fact that this model is all-wheel drive. Power is put to the ground through a nine-speed automatic transmission. Estimated gas mileage, 17 miles per gallon in the city, 25 out on the highway. Tell me down in the comments, if you are a Traverse owner, how close have you been able to get to those numbers? Have you been able to exceed those numbers or are you way down underneath those numbers? There's a lot of variables that go into gas mileage that I, most people don't probably think about. If I knew exactly what Chevrolet or all these car makers did to get to their estimated gas mileage numbers, well, maybe we could try and duplicate that and see if we could achieve those numbers. But anyway, one thing I like about the Traverse is that it is a smooth riding model. And I realize that sometimes People are going to have varying opinions about that, and that really comes based on what they are used to. So what I'm used to on a daily basis as far as a daily driver goes, well, I must say, I like the ride quality of the Traverse. And always having all-wheel drive gives stability. So if you're using all-wheel drive mode, which obviously it defaults to that. When you turn the ignition off, it's gonna default back to that all-wheel drive setting. If you wanna go back into two-wheel drive or off-road off mode, try and get that out, you can do that. But it's gonna to default to all-wheel drive. And so that's gonna mean increased stability on all driving surfaces, whether it's something like we're dealing with today where it is very windy outside, but nice and dry, or if it's wet, course, snow and ice. What a big difference all-wheel drive makes is a lot of people found here across the south in recent weeks when we got eight inches of snow, at least here in northwest Louisiana, of course that turned to ice, made for quite an interesting experience for a lot of drivers. A lot of people told me I will never buy a new car again that is not all-wheel drive. Chances are we won't see that happen again, but you never know. It's been quite a few years. I think 1988 was the last time we saw that happen. As far as ease of convenience and operation of all the different features and the functionality, that's very easy to operate and navigate your way around through the infotainment system. Everything's just super simple. If you want to go through the information on the instrument cluster, again, very easy to do, very easy to navigate. Leather wrapped steering wheel is very comfortable. And I'm just going to make a turn here real quick. See how easy it is. Look at the turning radius we just made right there. I hope you can see that on the video. I actually had the ability to turn even further. I didn't reach full lock in that turn. So I must say the Chevrolet Traverse, I never thought about this before. I probably should do that more often, showing the turning radius of the vehicles that I feature here on the Vehicle Visionary YouTube channel. But I'll tell you what, Chevrolet definitely can get high marks from me, at least, on the Traverse. Tell me what your pros and cons are as far as the Traverse is concerned. And of course, if you're wondering, does it come standard all-wheel drive? The answer to that question is no, for those who may not know the answer to that question. Typically, you're going to get front-wheel drive, but obviously, all-wheel drive is optional depending on what you desire and what your needs are. But I must say, I'm very impressed overall with the Traverse. Sitting up pretty high off the ground gives you a good view of everything going on around you, a great turning radius. Everything is easy to learn. If you've never had the kind of technology available in these vehicles, in your vehicle, there are still people out there who have had the same vehicle for 20 or 30 years or however long the case may be. And they've never had an infotainment screen or all of the different driving aids that we have here with these models. Don't be afraid of that is my main point here. Just easy to learn whether it's through videos like mine or maybe somebody at the dealership is helping you to learn. Don't be afraid of the modern day technology in these vehicles. 
Like I said, guys, we don't normally do things this way, but being so windy outside, I wanted to give you a little bit better audio than you might have had otherwise with the wind blowing against my lapel mic. So I've got to say a special thanks to my friends at Red River Chevrolet for loaning me this traverse for the day and all of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye-bye.